Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Uh, we have the Toolpost Grinder almost ready to run. The last thing that we need is a way to dress the wheel and true it up and smooth it up, get it running concentric uh, with flat square edges so that we can grind. Now, I've thought about a lot of different ways to do this. The whole time I've been doing all the other videos in this series, I've been trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. And I've ultimately decided to make a magnetic wheel dresser with a single diamond point. That'll allow us to stick that on the tailstock ram, stick it on the side of the tailstock, stick it on the chuck, stick it on the workpiece, you know, wherever is appropriate for the kind of cut and the kind of dress that's needed on the wheel. Let's go over to the bench and take a look at what I've got in mind. There are lots of ways to dress a grinding wheel. There's lots of different tools. There are um, uh, sticks. Norton makes a, a dressing stick. You can get uh, dressers with little wheels on them. You can get dressers with T heads on them with a bunch of little diamonds. Uh, but what I'm gonna use is a single point diamond dresser. And that's what this is. And uh, this is a handheld tool designed to be run back and forth against a wheel on a bench grinder. If you take a close look at the end, there is an industrial diamond, in this case it's a quarter carat diamond, set in some kind of epoxy or centered into the end of the tool. And the idea is you run this back and forth against the wheel and it cuts the wheel and exposes a new surface, sharp grains, and squares up the shape of the wheel. I don't want to be using this by hand, trying to run this across the wheel and get it square, so I want to mount it and I'm going to use a magnet. This is the little Noga Popeye magnet, um, and it's just a little switchable magnetic base. Not super strong, um, but it is switchable and it's got a 5 millimeter thread here in the top, 5 millimeter by 0.8. So here's the plan. I'm going to take the end of this dresser, this is a 2x size, cut it off, put a couple of flats on it so that it's easy to screw in, and then drill it from the back and put some M5 threads. And then I'll use an M5 set screw, let's see, do I have one handy? Something like this to attach this to the back of the magnet. So tool will be cut off like this and the screw will be in there uh, holding it in. So I think the first thing I wanna do is go over to the mill and put some flats on the end of this while it's still in one big piece and easy to hang on to, and then we'll chop it off and put the threads in over at the lathe. Okay, the first thing we need to do is take the tip of this and uh, cut a couple of flats in it, just so that once we cut it off and thread the back, we can actually put a wrench on it and tighten this down. And I'm gonna do this with a collet block so that I can hold it and flip it over. Now, um, I wanna use a stop. And the reason I need a stop here is so that every time I flip it, I can put it back in the same position. So I'm gonna just use a vise jaw. Since we're not gonna take this part out of the collet, I can just use a stop here on the vise jaw. I'm not sure, can you even see that? You can kind of see that. Okay, so I'm just gonna clamp that on there. And so now, when I put this block in here, I can just bring it up against that stop, tighten it down, and it will always be in the same position. Now, I have a 7 16 inch collet, which fits this nicely. Snap that into the collet nut. Maybe, if I get that threaded on, okay. I'm gonna run that through and stick out just enough that we can reach the end to put some flats on it. Grab my ER40 wrench, tighten that down. Now, the depth doesn't really matter. It just needs to be wide enough to get a little bit of a wrench on it. And I have a little bit of a wrench here. You see, it's not very thick. So I just need to put a couple little flats right on the end. And I'll just kind of do that by eye. Now I've got this down. Um, I've got a 3 8 inch uh, powdered metal end mill in here that should come across. And uh, I'm thinking this should end up 
just shaving a little bit off and leaving this oversized. That's kind of where I have it positioned. We'll take a little off, we'll take a measurement, and we'll see where we are and then adjust. Now flip it over, 180 degrees, and because of the stop and the handle on the back, ah! because of the stop and the handle on the back, I have to lift it out further. Okay, let's see what we got. Yeah, it's definitely too shallow, but by how much? Okay, it looks like we're at about 403. means we got 28 to go, divide that by two, we gotta go down about 14. And again, I'm probably gonna go down about 15, just to make sure that we're slightly undersize. Let's try that, this should be the final cut. Okay, now flip it over, 180 degrees. And we'll take the final cut on the other side. Okay, let's see. That will go on there, but it's very tight. Uh, I think it's just burrs. Oh yeah, it's definitely just burrs. Okay, I don't wanna go too deep on that. I'm gonna call that good. Let me take this out of here and let's go over and cut it off. Okay, got the flats on the end of this thing. So the next thing that we need to do is cut this off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp it here in my bench vise and do this with a hacksaw. I think getting this in the band saw would be a very difficult thing to do. Now let's see, how far in are we supposed to cut this? The overall length from this shoulder back is 450 thousandths. So I've got it about that deep into here. So as long as I cut outside the jaws of the vise, I should have plenty of room left. Okay, just a high tension hacksaw. And I'll just make the cut. This should be really mild steel. Oh yeah. Okay. Good.
Good news. It was solid. I was a little afraid that it might be hollow, but this is going to be great. So we can take this over the lathe, face it, put in some threads. Okay, so we've got this done now and we need to face it to length and, um, and put in some threads in the back. Now, according to the drawing, the length is supposed to be about 450 thousandths back from this shoulder. So, this is not terribly precise, nor does it really have to be. I'm just gonna make a scratch there just so I can see it. And then I'm gonna put it in as deep as I can. color right up to that scratch. So when all that blue is off, I have it to the right depth, right length. Oh yeah, way too slow. Let's spin this up so we can face this off and get a half decent surface finish. here. Ah, 460, 450. That's close enough. And it's typical mild steel finish. Now, let's go ahead and put a hole in this and tap it. Now, we want to be very, very careful about the depth because lest we forget, there's a diamond in there. And if we over drill, we'll end up in the diamond which will destroy the tool and the drill. And we'll have to go buy another one and start over. And just like always, I use a center drill and I'm just gonna to try to very lightly spot this. Okay, now the pilot drill for this is 4.3 millimeter or 4.2 millimeter. Let's see if I have one handy. Okay, here we go, 4.2 millimeter. Now we need to be very careful about the depth. The depth has got to be 375 or less. I'm going to mark that on the drill. Put a hole in it. This is the point where we'll either over penetrate and hit the diamond or we'll be fine. And I'm not going that fast with this drill.
Okay, that's as far as I'm going. Don't think we hit the diamond. It's still in there. Yep, it's still in there. Okay. Let's put in an M5 tap. And we will make the same mark on the tap, just to be sure. As deep as I want to run it. And I'm going to just go ahead and just do this by hand. like we just bottomed. Okay. Well, I do think I'm going to run a quick chamfer around that outside edge. Okay, that looks good. We have a diamond point. Next thing you do is just put it together. Okay, well, we've got a magnet. We've got a diamond with a thread on the back of it. And we've got a screw. Let's go ahead and put this together. Go ahead and run the set screw down in there until it bottoms. Now, I can Loctite that in if that becomes a problem. And then we can just screw this down onto the top of the magnet. Nice and solid. Okay, well, what can we do with it? Well, assuming we had the tool post grinder on here, which I don't at the moment, there's all kinds of places this could go. Could mount it on the end of the tailstock and run the grinding wheel against it here. We can mount it on, on the side of the tailstock quill because this has got a V-block in it and we can dress the grinding wheel that way. We can put it um, on the chuck itself, bring the grinding wheel over and dress against that. Or if we've got a piece of stock in here, which I should have prepared before I turned on the camera, Or if we have a piece of stock in here, we can use the V-block, put it right on the stock, on the workpiece, and come over and dress the grinding wheel against that. So I think we're all ready now. We've got the grinder put together, we've got the guard uh, for the wheel, we've got a uh, diamond to dress the wheel with. All we gotta do is dress a wheel and grind something. Actually, I gotta hook up some electronics. The whole thing is disassembled right now. I gotta hook up some connectors and cables to get power to it. So we will do that next time. If you are enjoying these videos, feel free to subscribe so you won't miss future videos. Leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.